I. It's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is feed. Let's take a look at some of the meanings for this particular verb. The one you'll be most uh, used to or familiar with is the first one, to give food to someone or something. And the reason I include something here is because this can apply to animals, including your pets. The verb feed, though, just doesn't have to connect to uh, food. There are actually a number of other ways to use them. I'm going to highlight three more, but I want you to know this is not uh, every single definition or meaning uh, for the verb feed. The second definition we'll look at is to insert coins into. If you live in a large city where you need to pay for parking on the street, um, the action of putting coins into the meter so that you have a half hour, an hour or more time where you can legally park is uh, many times called feeding the meter or feeding the parking meter. Uh, but we, we can use this uh, with all kinds of other machines as well. Uh, if you go to an arcade where there are video games, uh, you might talk about feeding that machine. Uh, laundry mats, uh, another place where you might use some coins and put them into a machine. You can use this verb feed to describe that action. Another meaning for feed is to supply something with power or fuel for its operation. Uh, in one of my uh, later examples, I'll, I'll show you how we might talk about that. Uh, one common way is feeding a fire. And the last definition we'll look at here is to supply someone with information. So uh, again, just a little recap here for thinking about feed, it's not just food. We've talked about coins, giving power, giving information. Um, all of this here um, connects to our verb feed. Feed is an irregular verb. If we wanna make our progressive form, all we need to do is add ing to make feeding. The past tense and participle forms have a different spelling and different pronunciation. So it's F-E-D and it's pronounced fed, fed. Let's take a look now at some phrasal verbs with feed. And again, this is going to increase uh, the number of meanings or ways we can use this particular verb. The first phrasal verb we'll take a look at is feed off. And its meaning is to gain strength or energy from someone or something. Here's an example sentence. The players fed off the crowd's enthusiasm and support and came back to win the game. So in uh, reading about sports and other events, it's pretty common actually to see this phrasal verb, feed off. So if the crowd is energetic, perhaps that energizes the team, it gives them more energy. Another phrasal verb that's common to hear or see is feed into. This can have a, a couple different meanings. The first meaning is to insert or input something into something else. Here's an example of that. Feed the paper into the printer, right? So we're inserting paper so that something can be printed and come out of the printer. A second meaning for feed into is to flow into another body of water. So here we're really talking about kind of connections between different bodies of water. This could be uh, creeks, rivers, ponds, lakes. Um, here's an example sentence. The Des Moines River feeds into the Mississippi River. The last phrasal verb we're going to look at is feed on, and it can also have a couple different meanings. The first meaning 
is just to eat something. So um, here's an example sentence with that. Squirrels feed on nuts, small insects, and seeds. A second meaning for feed on is to become stronger because or due to something else. Here's an example of that. Racism will feed on fear or indifference. So what this sentence is suggesting is that uh, racism will become stronger or more obvious due to fear or due to indifference, which is like, I don't care. Uh, another word for that is apathy. Let's continue using feed in some different verb tenses. Today, we'll look at the simple past, simple present, and the present progressive. Let's start with simple past. Remember, in the affirmative, we want to use this irregular form uh, to, to describe an activity that is already complete. Uh, generally, we use this uh, when there's a definite time in mind. It might not always be stated, uh, but it could be part of the conversation or part of the story that you're reading. Here's an example of an affirmative past tense sentence. Guests fed on fruit, cheese, and nuts. Just a different way to say guess ate fruit, cheese, and nuts. If I want to make a negative sentence in the simple past tense, I'm going to use did not and then the base verb. So here's an example of that. We didn't feed the cat before we left. If I want to make a yes or no question in the simple past tense, I'm going to start with did, then I'll have my subject, then the base verb. Here's an example of that. Did you feed the baby? Next, let's take a look at simple present. We use this verb tense to talk about habits and routines. We also use it with facts and to discuss our feelings. Let's look at an affirmative example. Horses feed on grass, hay, fruits, and vegetables. Now, if my subject had just been one horse, so I said the horse, I'd want to make sure I get an S on the end of that verb, feeds. It's really the trickiest part about the simple present. To make a negative simple present, we're going to take do not and the base verb or does not and the base verb. Here's an example of negative simple present. Wet firewood doesn't feed a fire. So uh, again, this connects back to one of those earlier definitions I mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, in terms of supplying fuel. So if you want a fire to continue to burn, putting something wet isn't going to help it continue to burn. So that's why it's not continuing to supply the fuel for the fire. Let's look at making a yes or no question in the simple present. To do this, we'll start with do or does, then we'll have our subject, then the base verb. Does he feed his dog each morning? Finally, let's take a look at present progressive. We use that, uh, this particular verb tense to talk about activities that are in progress or that are happening right now. To, to make the present progressive, I need to use a present form of be, so that's am, is, or are, and then the ing form of the verb. Here's an affirmative example. I'm feeding my plants coffee grounds and eggshells. So this example might seem a little weird to some people. Do you, can you feed plants? And the answer is absolutely. Um, if you think back to that uh, initial definition, uh, providing food for someone or something, here's another example of that. Um, plants need energy to continue to grow. 
uh, and some people will actually use coffee grounds, eggshells, other uh, scraps um, from, from their kitchen to help the soil have more nutri nutrients for the plants to grow. Okay, now let's look at negative present progressive. To make this verb tense, I just need to insert not after my new verb. Here's an example. The children aren't feeding animals at the pen zoo. Finally, if I want to ask a yes or no question in the present progressive, I'm going to start with a form of be, then my subject, and then the ing form of the verb. Is someone feeding you the answers? So here, this particular usage is going back to that definition of supplying information. So another wording for this particular question, is someone giving you the answers? How do you know everything? Let's take a look now at some words that are related to our verb feed. And the first word we'll look at is the noun form of this word. Exact same spelling, exact same pronunciation. And just like the verb, it can also have a couple different meanings. The first way feed as a noun is used is an act of giving food to someone or something, or it could just be referring to food generally. Here's an example of that. These crops will become feed for animals. So whatever's being grown is eventually going to turn into food for animals. Another meaning for feed is a list of updates on social media. So uh, this is a, a newer definition or newer meaning, but you might hear people talk about their Facebook feed or their Twitter feed. Uh, so when you log on uh, either to those websites or to their apps, you'll see various updates kind of listed. Uh, sometimes there are pictures or links to other things. Uh, that information is someone's uh, feed. Sometimes it's called a news feed. So, um, and that's my example sentence. What's on your Facebook feed? Another related word is feeder. It can also have a couple different meanings. The first is a container that's filled with food for birds or animals. Here's an example sentence. The bird feeder is empty. Another meaning for feeder is a person or thing that supplies something. Here's an example of that. The copier has an automatic paper feeder. So in this example, uh, again, we're talking uh, about a machine that automatically inputs or, or takes paper in um, to make copies or uh, print other items. The last word we'll look at today is also a noun. It's feedback. And this is information about a product or information about a person's work. And this information, uh, its purpose is so that the product can be improved or that the person can make improvements in their work. So here's an example of that. Did your boss give you good feedback? Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.